Yeah, thank you. Um, welcome to uh, our presentation called uh, Work Smarter, Not Harder. Uh, my name is uh, Bo. That's B-O. People often confuse it with a P, but uh, it is B-O. And uh, with me is uh, Hans and, and Jerry. Um, to start off the, the presentation, um, I will uh, I will give uh, some tips and, and guidelines to uh, how you can uh, work smarter, improve your your workday. Um, some some general tips and um, also uh, talk a bit about um, how we work with uh, front end development, uh, work with templates and, and Bootstrap and, and stuff like that. But it is a uh, like a general uh, overview of it. Then next up is uh, Hans, who will uh, talk about less, uh, how we use less in our front-end projects. And uh, Jerry will um, um, finish it with, um, with a talk about Grunt. He will come up with some specific examples on, on how to use Grunt to, uh, to improve your, your workflows. So, uh, so his part will probably be the most specific um, with the with the examples and uh, a live uh, presentation of, of how to use Grunt. Um, when we started this uh, to prepare for this um, um, session, um, I, I googled. Uh, <laughs> I, I took the lazy way out and, and googled uh, "work smarter and not harder," and I found this quote, um, which says that workaholics aren't heroes; they don't save the day; they, they use it up. The real hero is already home because uh, she figured out a faster way to get things done. Uh, now I see my boss is here, so he probably don't agree <laughs> completely with with this. Uh, but but I think there is some truth to it. Um, that it's important that you you think about how uh, how how you uh, spend your work day, how um, what, what what you use it, um, uh, how you use it, um, because then you can can uh, get, get more things done faster, um, I think. Um, the first thing I, I thought about was, um, yeah, steal, steal stuff. Uh, not, not in the literal sense, but, but it's, uh, I think it's important to, to find inspiration uh, elsewhere. Uh, Raphael uh, Domes at his uh, keynote yesterday also said it, that it's, it's a, a good thing to, uh, to look around on, on GitHub repositories and on other code examples and, and see how, how other people do things and maybe use it. Um, for example, maybe you don't need to uh, to build your own responsive uh, framework. There are already a lot of them out on, on the market that you can use. Uh, you also had a point, maybe, maybe you, you can build your own framework, but then throw it away afterwards because there's probably others who have done it a lot better. And uh, um, but 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 look around for for stuff on the internet to get inspiration and uh, to to see how other people uh, do things. Um, yeah, choose a simple solution. It's uh, it's usually the best, <laughs> and uh, it's also uh, often um, the, the the simple solution is is easy, usually easier to to maintain and to. Uh, to, uh, to yeah to um, to keep up to date um, and if others are, are going to work with you uh, the, the easy solution is uh, the simple solution is also easier for them to, to get into so in, in projects where several people are involved uh, it's it's a good thing to uh, to uh, to try to find uh, a simple solution um, pick a weapon um, it ties in a bit with the previous slide because uh, um, picking a, a weapon that is uh, easy to maintain. Um, I found this uh, comic book uh, um, slide from uh, from a comic book hero called Punisher, and uh, he found a gun that shoots swords. That's probably not the most easy weapon to maintain, I would think. So um, so pick a, a weapon like a pick a framework that you're comfortable with. And, uh, and 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 use that. Um, I'll get back to what what we have uh, used in in our projects for frameworks and uh, both the CSS frameworks and also template frameworks and why we we uh, we use those. Um, so uh, this is more of a general uh, rule of thumb. Uh, it's, it's something you often see when when you when you look at at, at articles. Uh, about how to improve your workday and, and get things 
done faster. Uh, one of the main distractions, at least for me, that's email. Uh, stop checking your email constantly um, because uh, it takes up so much of your time if you have to answer every email at, at once. So uh, I, I usually, the way I, I, I work with it is uh, I, I check my email three or four times a day and then I close close the email program and then work on, on whatever project I'm working on. So that's a good way of uh, avoiding a distraction like that. Also, if you, you work uh, in an office with, uh, with colleagues, uh, they'll often come up to you and ask for questions and, and, and stuff like that. And it's okay to say no to people, to say, not right now, uh, cannot wait. And, and also, to, uh, uh, if you receive phone calls often uh, during the day, uh, have someone answer it for you if it's, if, if it's possible, um, if you're in, in, in the zone, uh, because it, it, it takes so much time to, to get back into the zone. So I think that's uh, that's also important. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, planning uh, your day and, uh, or of course, also your projects. Um, have a plan on what you want to do. Maybe even uh, time frames on, on when you you want to uh, to to get things done. Um, so if 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 you know what you are going to do, it's a lot easier to. Uh, to, to see the end of the tunnel and, 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 and get things uh, done, I, I find. So, uh, yeah, planning is Im important. So, um, we, um, when, when I started uh, working uh, with, with front end, uh, front end work at Red Web, we, uh, we, we built our, all our templates from scratch. So, we pretty much started over each time we. We started on a new project. Um, two years ago, we uh, started working with the right framework, uh, a template framework built by, by Jim Lashak. And um, we were very happy with it uh, because it gave us like a, a base uh, to start off by every time we start building uh, a new uh, new project. Um, and we, we still use it for, for customer, both customer projects and also for our, our temp, uh, template club. Um, some of the the, the key points about it is that it's very lightweight. Um, it's not bloated like some other frameworks can be. Um, uh, there's not uh, like a tons of file you need to uh, to, to to work in to uh, to uh, customize it. Um, it's easy to get get quickly into, and uh, it includes less support, which uh, uh, Hans will uh, talk about later. Um, but we are thinking about <laughs> moving on from, from this uh, right framework and maybe start uh, going back full circle and maybe may, may make it even more lightweight um, because it still includes, uh, it includes a lot of uh, libraries and, uh, and CSS files and, uh, and uh, JavaScript files. So, so I think we'll, we have thought about moving forward and, uh, and um, maybe building our own. Um, in uh, in right framework um uh, the twitter bootstrap twitter bootstrap framework is uh, also uh, included and uh, yeah we've used that for a very long time um pretty much from from the beginning uh and uh, yeah that it, that also helps you uh, build um websites fast in my opinion because you have the the grid layout already uh, set up for you um so compared to to earlier where you where you built your your grids on, on your own, um, it's it's much faster to to, to work with. Um, fine. Um, yeah, to bootstrap or not to bootstrap. Uh, a lot of uh, criticism uh, bootstrap gets is uh, that uh, all bootstrap websites look alike, but uh, I don't agree with that. Um, we have made a lot of websites built in, in bootstrap uh, that, that look totally different. So it's just a matter of, of, of how you uh, customize it. Um, I don't think there's any limits to, to, to what, you, uh, what you can do. And can see Phil is uh, smiling down there. I think he agrees too. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but I think some of the, the key points uh, or, or the, uh, um, yeah, 
the advantage it has is that you can build a, a website structure really fast. There's a lot of uh, tools like JavaScript plugins uh, built in already that you can, can use. And uh, yeah, there's also list support, which is uh, really great. <laughs> so um, I'll uh, give it to, to Hans. Uh, we'll talk about this. Yes, hello. My name is Hans, and I'm from Denmark, and I work at Metrip. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go through these uh, points. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's why we use this. It's easy to maintain. Like Paul said, keep it simple. Um, yeah. So if you keep it simple, it's easier for the college and or other people who are, who's gonna use the code or source later on to edit it and change it. Um, and keep the request down. Since list is compiling all the stuff to one file, it's one request only. So it compiles one CSS file, and uh, yeah, the the page speed is going to be good because we have the request down. Uh, and since uh, or we, when we use the list, we use a lot of variables and stuff, so uh, it's fast to change the base layout. Um, and that means you can like change colors and other base stuff, very simple, with just changing one variable, and you're good to go, basically. If the client calls you later on and say, oh, the button should be red instead of green, just change one thing, and it's, it's good to go. Yeah, so uh, what is this? It's a life and time saver, because again, it's a sim simple and, uh, yeah, very minified. You have nested levels, so it's easy for for you and us to like check or see the code. When I open an old template built on basic CSS, my head is going yeah crazy. I can't even write CSS anymore because you don't you don't have the nested uh, levels anymore. It's hard to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, it's people processing, processing the CSS, and that means you have like a list file, and then it com converts all the the list stuff to a CSS file basically. Which uh, yeah, it's, it's it's good. I'm gonna show you some stuff. Yeah. So here you see some nested levels. You have like a, a top level here, and then you have some li tag here and an a tag here. And uh, if or when we compile this stuff, it's gonna be that extra menu and then an li and an a for this uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, it's easy at least for me and I guess that's also you to like read it because yeah you don't have to see maybe if we have this structure in the CSS file you're just gonna have maybe I don't know at least 50 lines of code just to do the, those uh, 10 lines um, so it's easy to, to read and uh, understand I hope <laughs> and uh, a little good uh, thing to use that's the that mark it means the parent element like we have here um, so it means when the a tag is hard you can like do some stuff and change the color for the hover effect of this element. Yes. Yeah. Again, uh, again, like the colors. There's lots of mix and stuff in the in this where you can again, if 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 or when the client is calling you and say this button shouldn't be red now, it should be yellow. You just go in and change the variable to yellow, and it's it's good to go. So it's time saving a lot. And uh, in our framework, we use we have some kind of special files um, for the for the viewports. So it's easy to to change the the responsive part later on. Um, yeah. And variables mixing they're coming now. I took some examples for the color options. Where you can have some uh, kind of uh, a make sense, where you basically just write that spin, for example, and a color and ten, and then it's going to be ten uh, degree larger in the hue. Or you can mix a color. So if you have two colors, you can just mix those two colors together, and you get a, a third color in the output. So if, if for example, again, if the client's going to call you, he wants a yellow button, but it should be a little bit more green. You can just say mix color uh, yellow and green. And then the percent, and it's gonna output the color in the yeah, in the hex hex code. 
And also, again, the light, we use the, the, the lightning and dark, dark a lot for hover effects. Uh, yeah. Yes. This is uh, some kind of base, uh, base uh, bootstrap variables. Again, it's at least for us, it's easier to read. You have a text color and then the hex code afterwards. That means all the text colors or base text color is going to be that color. Um, and again, link color. Then it's another variable that is set before. So yeah, and it's easy to uh, yeah use the variables. At least easy to uh, well, uh, to maintain it afterwards. Um, again, keep it lightweight. So it's not all stuff that's built in in Bootstrap or less by default. So if or when or if or when you want some stuff, basically uh, custom stuff, you can write your own. Just, this is just some simple examples. But if you write, uh, write uh, dot round, for example, and some kind of CSS rule, you could just write here dot round and the semicolon, and it's going to be round or border radius 50%. And same with the Lado and Roboto. It's just funds we use. So it, like here, we use the dot Lado here, and it's going to include this stuff here. That means, again, if or when the client is calling you, say, I want a new fund for all the uh, H1 and H2 tags, just change the dot later to something else, and it's you're good to go. Yeah. So now it's the service. Well, hi. My name is Jerry. Some of you might know me. Um, I get easily distracted if there is beer around. Uh, so, <laughs> especially here at Jap, and then even Cancun was a bit more distracted. There were spills as well. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a bit about Grunt. Um, uh, my daily work is, is uh, doing front-end development, uh, amongst uh, a lot of other things. Uh, but uh, th this is what I'm passionate about. So, I found I, I read about Grunt for about a year and a half ago. Um, but hadn't really had the time to go deeper into it. Uh, as Christian Hallman said as, at the opening keynote, uh, when you find some cool stuff, it's not always you have time because you have clients as well. Uh, but, but now I had the time to go a bit more deeper into it, uh, and I think it's really cool. So I wanted to show you guys how uh, you can use it to your projects and, and how you can save a lot of, uh, of time by using it the way I do. Um, so, so, so it, Grunt is for your everyday tasks. As a front ender, you're uh, always been told that you need to have only one CSS file, one JS file, or a, a, at least as little five uh, HTTP requests as possible in a template, since it takes up loading time. So, um, this helps to do that, since it. It, it can both compile and concatenate and octify and a lot of things. So it, it helps doing your daily tasks. So Grunt runs on, on Node.js, and I'm not a super expert in that at all. Uh, you don't need to be either. It's, uh, it's just something that runs on it. Uh, so, so Grunt is a, a JavaScript client, no, a server-side task runner. Uh, which then utilizes Node.js. Uh, it's a command line tool. Um, so for those who, uh, who doesn't really know how to use any commands or even the terminal, you don't need to be afraid of it. For it's really just it's it's really simple command you need to use to to get it started. And once it's started, you you don't need to write those commands that day again. So it's uh, it's about two or three commands and then you're going. So it is really simple. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of what it can do, so just some code bits of it. And then uh, later on, I'm going to uh, show you how the code runs and how you can use it. So we use less, as both uh, Bo and Hans told, uh, talked about in our projects. And um, in Grunt, if you need to compile a list, this is the only code you need to write. And then it it compiles the list file. So you have some options to compress and how optimized it needs to be. 
Um, that going into details, don't have much time to do that. Then here you can see that you have the template that last file is what it's looking for, and then it it compiles that to the template that last uh, CSS file. Yeah, and it, as I told, it can concatenate as well. So you have the source file and the destination file. So you can combine uh, a lot of different source files and then have one file at the, at the end, which you can then uglify or, yes. So, so when you combine the files, you will get one big file and you need a minified version since it, it takes up less space. Uh, which is uh, again a good thing when you're talking about speed optimization on a, on a website. So again, you have the source file and destination file, and the destination file is the only one we are calling in our template. Again, when you had the um, the the less compiled, you got the template that CSS file, and and we are going to make that into a production that CSS file, which is minified. So a really cool thing in in, uh, in Grunt is you have a NPM module that can watch all of your files. So it searches for changes in your files. You can do it both with images. And what I'm do doing here, I'm doing it with uh, with less files. So when I change anything in my less file, it auto compiles instantly. So I don't have to compile or anything. It does the work for me. Um, and then I have a, a smart little thing down here called live reload, which is um, as soon as it compiles, it reloads my browser automatically. So I don't have to go in and press F5, which we normally do like a thousand times a day, if that can be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, show you how this script runs, and uh, hopefully you like it. Well, yeah, the finger. So the um, just gonna kill this. So what I've done here in my command prompt is I've I've changed directory inside to the follow where I have Grunt. Uh, what I forgot to, to, to tell earlier is that you need Grunt for each of your projects. So when you start a new project, you need to install Grunt as, as well. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, simply just write Grunt and let us see the magic. So it compiled my list, it concatenated, it uglified, minified my CSS. And right now it's running uh, the image min, which is looking through all of my images in an images folder. And inside that, I have 44 images, as you can see. And some of those are not completely optimized. I don't know if any of you know uh, tinypng.com or JPEG, tiny JPEG. So this actually pretty much does the same thing, just automatically does it for a whole folder. Uh, and you can set watch up for that folder as well. So even when you get new uh, images in, when you're sitting and saving, slicing your Photoshop file and saving the images inside, you can uh, automa automatically, um, yeah, um, minify the images. Um, there's a lot of options to that. You can also uh, convert JPEG to progressive images, which is uh, a lot better. Um, so yeah. At the bottom here, it says uh, it, it's running the watch task which means that it's looking for my less file right now. So if, if I go in here um, and choose anything in here, file, as you can see, I did the change in this file, and then it run, runs the task. I, I said it, it should run when there's any changes. So I'm going to show you the live reload stuff right now. 
as you can see here, changing this to gray and not doing anything else, it live reloaded my website. So I didn't have to do anything at all. It just watches for it. So there's two things about the live reload. Uh, of course, I need a bit of code inside my grunt file, which was down here. Only one line of code inside that watch. And then I need a plugin from livereload.com, which you can all download to both Chrome and Firefox and whatever you need it to. And then it, it, it listens to what file you're changing based on the watch file. So it's, it's really, really simple um, once you just get it running. Uh, but there's, it, it doesn't take too much to get it running. As you can see, it's only four steps. Um, and after here, I'm going to make a zip file and, and tweet the location where you can download everything I've done here. So we have a basic Joomla template with Bootstrap already in it. And it can auto-compile and do all the stuff you just saw. So um, you can download that when I share the link. So go follow me on Twitter <laughs> to get that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to share today, actually. Um, I hope you think that is smart, as I do. It's a, a time saver, at least. Um, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If anyone have any questions to either one of us, yeah. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah. But that's yeah, it is useful. That's the beauty of, of Run as well. There's a thousand different modules you can use, and they're so easy to just set up and maintain. So it's really for those of you that don't use Grunt today, I think that you should uh, try to look at, uh, at it and, and have a go at it. It's uh, it's not too difficult to set up at all. So any questions at all? So yeah, you have. Yeah, you, you just have to pretty much uh, change the grunt file you saw. Uh, the, yeah, to the right destinations, uh, to right source files, and then it, it will run. So you can use it to any template at all. Uh, who wrote your watch for the app? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your strategy on uh, including uh, boot to desktop? Do you include the full boot to desktop, or do you what you think you need inside the project? It's up to you. Uh, but you right? It, it, yeah. So so um. Well, it it it's a bit different to what I'm showing here. Uh, what we do normally. But but right here, just an, a, as an example, I've loaded all the the last file from Bootstrap. I pretty much just did the npm install the um, uh, Bootstrap, and then it uh, got me all the different uh, JS plugins and all the different list files. So so everything is in there, and I'm just collecting that with an import. Um, but you can go in and comment those things out if you don't need them. So it's a, it's it's a per project what you need. So, so um, the live reload thing, uh, I've only, yeah, 
I've only tested it to work on on, on local machine. But uh, but if you have access to your if you have SSH access uh, to your terminal to your server, you can use this as well. It's it's not a problem at all. Yeah, since it can just uh, watch a folder of images, and and when the client puts up that image, it can run that task immediately. <coughs> Yeah, uh, about the images. Yeah. Uh, if you need to set that up, you need another module uh, called uh, newer, I guess, grunt newer. Um, so, so that when you uh, have the task running again with the image man, it doesn't take all the old images that the client put up, but only the new ones. So it still listens for the, uh, through the folder, but only takes the new ones. Yeah? Do you use Could have, but no. Yeah. But, but yeah, I like the whole idea of, of VAR as well. Yeah? Any questions? That's it then. Thank you. Thank you.